This is a charming little piece by Vice, and there's not too much to say about it. Um, it's in drop D tuning, so you have to um, drop your sixth string, right? Good three turns should do it usually. And then um, it's it's in terms of Vice, this is actually one of his more playable pieces, with the exception of one or two bars. And I've made some performance notes on the score, so you can get the PDF just by following the link underneath the the video, um, or you can buy the sheet music only, or the sheet music and tab, or an unfingered version as well. And um, a couple of performance notes. But in general, the piece is pretty straightforward, and I fingered it all, so it works really well compared to lots of Vice's pieces. And uh, the short length of this one also makes it kind of more manageable in, um, for the guitar and transferring it over. So um, not too much to say, let's just do a small walkthrough. And I, um, besides keeping like a, a fairly even pulse, you just want a really smooth legato sound. This piece almost verges on some classical elements in terms of like legato phrasing and stuff like that. It's a true gallant style piece of the late Baroque. So it's almost transitioning into this kind of smooth classical style, but still has all these Baroque elements in it. So, um, starting off, just lots of chord work, so just keep your harmonies, you know, ringing if it's a D chord and stuff like that. Um, the octave registers are, are changeable, like if you feel like changing some of them, feel free to. Um, this comes from um, a 13 chorus loop, right? So um, I've raised a lot of the octave lines, like a lot of the bass lines up an octave. Or sometimes, like at the beginning, it would go D, D, low C, low C sharp. But instead I go D, raise the D, and then start the descent there. So um, it's a it's a work, you know, like that you can, it's flexible in terms of its bass voice and what octave you put it in. But I think I've, I've made it so that the motifs make a certain amount of sense. All just second position. Just places like that, just make sure that bass line is, is coming through nice and smooth while, and also the top line just so you get some counterpoint in there this is charming little figuration the mordants were clearly marked in his music so you do a mordant so D C sharp D I've put a mordant here even though it's not in the original because it's kind of the same figure. The grace notes, um, those weren't marked in the original but there's an ornamentation mark that Weiss uses and he's not specific as to what ornament to use so I've put in a poggiaturas in this case and you turn the note into the note, the two notes into the value of the grace note. So in this case you play the A and the E at the same time and slurred to the G sharp, that's in bar 12. Now you might ask, why didn't I just write it out as 16th notes? If it's played as 16th notes, why not just write it out? Because it's an ornament, it's not the primary note. So by writing it with the grace note, you can see what the primary musical line is and what the ornament is, which makes a little bit diff, uh, it does make a difference in terms of how you play it and what you emphasize and your options, um, because you could do something different with that ornament. out here but you, you just have to use free fingers making sure you're always reaching out for that next note and connecting it legato in, in a legato fashion on the second time I sometimes do a mordant there second half I decided to put it all up here in fifth position because of this G here you have to shift. Same thing there, that grace note is just 16th, a 16th note with the bass, so F sharp and E to an, turning it into F sharp E. Just do a pivot there so you hit the, both of those notes 
Get the open B by lifting your finger, but keep that bass note sustaining. Same thing with that grace note. Turn it into a 16th note. You have no choice but to jump the fourth finger around there, but there's so much resonance it doesn't matter. This is the bar that I had to rewrite a little bit. So I've put brackets around the top D sharp after in bar 27. So 26, reach up, and then do a little bar A and just play an open B. There's supposed to be a D sharp there. Now on my small scale guitar, I can almost reach it. You can see I can almost reach it when I'm holding these notes but not quite. So um, I, after the initial D-sharp, I like to hear it first, and then just play the bass line with an open B. It's much easier. Otherwise, you're gonna have to like shift. I've seen other editions that like try to shift up and back down really quickly to get that D-sharp in there, or people that, with longer fingers maybe, might be able to reach that G-sharp, but um, I tried it on my regular size guitar and it wasn't very practical, so. I recommend just the high open B. Just keep the thumb on the bass line there. Closed these, by the way, is like you'll notice that I'm closing it just so it sounds more similar to the first one, right? Which is a cross string. Also cross string. It just keeps it more uh, a similar, keeps it in a similar texture. Do this with four two. That way three can reach down. Go up to sixth position, then fifth. You can hold on to that. I didn't in the video, I think I jumped. Either one's fine, but actually holding it down does sound a little bit nicer, right? You can sometimes do a little uh, mordant at the end if you like. Um, pretty straightforward piece, really beautiful, and it's kind of like the perfect little Baroque era work. Um, and, and in terms of 13 course lute transcriptions to the guitar, it works quite well, except for that one bar, but I think the solution I came up with um, sounds quite, quite nice. And it's not unlike the next couple bars in the piece that, that minus the inner voice anyway. So I hope you enjoy that. And again, you can get the sheet music um, with, from the link below, and it comes with everything you should need.